The first slide uh, is the cerebellum with hematoxanosin staining. With this magnification you can see the convolutions of the cerebellum, uh, which are called folium and not uh, gyrus. In uh, the center of each uh, folium you see a little bit paler area. This is the lamina alba, which is white matter, and this is surrounded by the three-layered uh, gray matter. You can see clearly that the white matter towards the center of the cerebellum increases in size and at the end it is coupled to the underlying brainstem with one of the cerebellar peduncles. This is a folium with higher magnification. Uh, you can see uh, the gray matter only in the photo. The uh, outermost layer, in spite of the relatively pale staining, belongs to the gray matter. This is called molecular layer. This is relatively cell poor. On the top we are able to see the pure matter. Uh, under the molecular layer we see one layer of uh, quite big pericaria. Uh, these uh, belong to the Purkinje cells and that's why this layer got the name as Purkinje cell layer. The innermost part of the gray matter is the darkest because, the, because of the most numerous cell in the whole CNS, uh, the granular cell cells. Uh, you can see these tiny rounded uh, cells. Between the uh, rounded, uh, relatively small cells, we have some pale areas. These, these correspond to the uh, cerebellar glomeruli, where we have compound synapses, uh, as I mentioned in the lecture, uh, between the dendrites of the uh, granular cells and the incoming MOSI fibers, plus uh, there are some other connections uh, with the different processes of the Golgi cells. In this photo, we are able to see a quite huge pericardion between the granular cells, and uh, this would uh, be a Golgi cell. Uh, this is quite irregular uh, and quite a large cell. Uh, this part of the cerebellum shows one folium upside down. As I mentioned earlier, the molecular layer is the outermost, which is relatively pale. Then you can see one row of Purkinje cell, uh, cell bodies. This is the Purkinje uh, cell layer and the innermost, which is the darkest, is the granular uh, layer with the uh, granular cells. The little spaces, uh, the pale parts of the granular layer uh, correspond to the cerebellar glomeruli. Uh, in the middle of the uh, photo here you see the uh, choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle, which is not surprising because the cerebellum is in the vicinity of the fourth ventricle. If you see this with higher magnification, but even with this you can see the simple cubital epithelium lining, uh, otherwise it's quite vascularized structure, so that's why you see different vessels, uh, I mean with different sizes of vessels with endothelium lining. Uh, in the right side you see uh, some nerve cells in accumulation. These are already in the underlying brainstem, so one of the brainstem nuclei. Uh, we are not able to recognize of which one. And if these uh, cell bodies or these kind of cell bodies are found in the higher white matter, unfortunately uh, in our uh, preparation uh, this is missing, but then they would be one of the intracerebellar or deep cerebellar nuclei. If uh, this uh, preparation is from the vermis, then the most uh, uh, obvious uh, intracerebral nucleus would be the fastigial nucleus.